own Jeremy Corbett, and yes, it was one of those weeks. The world kept spinning, news kept happening, and all we could do was sit and watch. So why not sit and watch this? A light comedy show about the news. Welcome to Seven Days. I'm not doing it alone much as I want to. I'm joined by seven of the country's funniest and most available comedians. <laughs> Let meet, uh, let's meet those that are in charge of the team, shall we? And the captain of Team One, our very own Caucasian bit of naval fluff, it's Di Henwood! <laughs> G'day, Jeremy. Good to see you, DH. It Would is you like very to good you? to be back. You're looking fit and well. How's the week been? Well, I'm looking fit and well because I've been seeing a nutritionist, right? Oh. Who's a friend as well. He's a nutritionist and a friend who's into exotic fruits. And he... <laughs> <laughs> Settle in, everyone. Settle in. <laughs> no, and he recommended I try this, like, uh, have you... A pineapple? And, um... <laughs> I know pineapples, mate. Yeah, well, it's... Goal for all your pineapple needs. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you'd know they're not like a regular apple, right? <laughs> so I went to get... First thing I noticed. <laughs> I went to get one from yeah. a local supermarket. I won't name them because they're duopoly. And, um... <laughs> so I went and I bought it. I went and I bought it. Then Dole, wonderful sponsor of the show, they do these strange apples. And I put it... You've got a machine, you pop it in, and it cores it. Yes. Right? But there was something faulty with the machine. Oh. It caught it, and it just gave me the core. <laughs> so I went back to the checkout and I was waving my flaccid pineapple core <laughs> at this poor young checkout operator. Security's coming. I promised my nutritionist, plus all the colleagues in my household, that I'd be bringing home a, a cored pineapple. I get thrown out of the store and I'd just come home with a flaccid core of pineapple and that doesn't win your husband of the year, let me tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Introduce us to your team. They look wonderful. Team One is amazing tonight. Two big fans of Disney. We have someone who's visited Cinderella's castle and we have someone who just steals women's shoes. <laughs> Justine Smith and Ray O'Leary. And the leader of Team Two has the moustache of an 80s porn star and the hair of an 80s redneck. 40 years ago, he would have been so rad. It's Eli Matthewson. <laughs> Anything's happened in your week? Anything much? Haven't heard anything? <laughs> Nothing too big, no flaccid pineapple cores. OK. Uh, <laughs> but I was excited because I actually watched the show last week and I made an appearance on the show not as a panellist but as a news story because if you haven't heard, I actually recently became um, second to last on Dancing with the Stars. Um, thank you. Thank you. I prefer to call it runner, 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 runner up. Uh, <laughs> really glad though, because I'm so proud. I was part of the first ever same sex couple on Dancing with the Stars New Zealand, and the Woo! public responded. Yes. They did. They responded with a resounding goo, and. <laughs> some free time. A lot of people have been kind of checking in with me. They've been like, don't worry, you, the judges actually really liked you. This was entirely down to the vote. And I've been like, oh, that's awesome to know this is just because I'm unpopular. But <laughs> I, do, I did get to grab my favourite magazine. Oh, here we go. Weekend, Woman's Day. And they asked me to do an interview with me and my partner, me and my boyfriend to talk about our love story. The headline is Dumped Dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Eli, at least I'm a winner in love. And they've put that in quotation marks, but I never said that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Eli, who's on your team? Oh, such a good team tonight. Only one person that triggers me to see. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Bit cruel, wasn't it? It's so good. One of these people, a lot of people think, is related to me, and the other one shares my last name. It's Angela Dravid and Reese Matthewson. <laughs> To do with this, Reese to 333. You text Reese to 3333. Uh, you should have put text on there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a given. So it's Reese 23333. Is it yeah, number Re two? No, number two, no. <laughs> Reese 2, yeah. number 3333. Okay. So, <laughs> I spent $50 on this t shirt. <laughs> I got it for this. I could have just voted for myself 50 times. <laughs> Our first game, as it tends to be, is newsmakers. I'm going to show our team some context-free snippets from the week's news, and they've got to tell me why they're newsworthy. And Team One, you are up first. Here's a clip for you. Have a look. The government can carry um, a part of the cost, potentially quite a large part of the cost of installation. Why is that newsworthy? I think it, I think the government's going to pay is it for a bunch of tents to be installed for next year's festival on Parliament Lawns. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, yeah, so they've got the infrastructure there. Oh, are they building a whole new country? Because this one's a bit broken. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is about them developing the Chatham Islands, I think. 
<laughs> no one's developing the Chatham Islands, mate. <laughs> no, this is the Jeremy. They, um, they're putting full noise infrastructure into the Chatham Islands, starting with a road. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, sorry, Di. The government has pledged over $550 million to fight crime. And this comes as we see a spike in youth crime with multiple thefts and ram raids being carried out by offenders younger than 17 years old. It's quite hard, actually, to track these youth offenders down, although their car of choice is a Mazda Demio. So we know they're virgins. <laughs> I'm just now. worried that this is starting younger, you know? This, you've got to look not just at the government, but the parents. This is starting as young as three. There's a lot of pram what? raids. <laughs> <laughs> They're not that scary, though. Like, it's hard to be intimidating when your voice breaks during a robbery. Mm. <laughs> Give me a money. <laughs> if, if, we, if we want to solve youth crime, uh, all we need to do is wait 18 years. <laughs> I'm pretty amazed that this has happened under the Labour government because I remember in 2017, Jacinda was like, we're going to end child poverty. And I didn't realise the end of that sentence was by teaching children to steal. Yeah. <laughs> I know police did catch a group of children hiding and the children resisted arrest because they said the cop hadn't said, ready or not, here I come. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we just put child locks on the stores? <laughs> Team two, I've got a video for you. You ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay, team two, have a look at this. Actually, the whole system's calcified, you know, and it's been very slow. Oh. The whole system's calcified. It's been very slow. Why is that newsworthy? Cal is calcified when someone something turns white? Is that about the National Party lineup? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what's calcified is the little charger that I put my electric toothbrush on. That is oh, yeah. gross. Oh, oh yeah, man. Oh, no, you can clean them. <laughs> I have no idea, Eli. I defer to you, oh, Captain, my captain. OK, Jeremy. I yep. think I've seen this, because I'm doing breakfast radio every day, so I'm up with the play. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Flux has been talking this week, there's not enough butchers. What? There's not enough butchers in the country. Don't know how you got that from that, but you are absolutely right. Well done, Eli. A crippling shortage of butchers across the country has led the meat industry to invest in robots that use advanced vision technology and mechanical slicing arms to process over 600 carcasses in an hour. Some people are like, oh, pretty shocked by this, but as long as the butcher gives me a free Cheerio when I pop in, I don't care if he's a human <laughs> or a vacuum cleaner, to be honest. <laughs> I just want my meat. Do you think, like, in 50 years, or in, we're in a full-on war with the robots, we're going to be like, we shouldn't have taught them to chop up meat? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do we need to... Like, I don't think we should have butcher robots, to be honest. You don't get the same level of conversation. What can we do to attract young people into the industry? But this was you? bound to happen when all of our butchers are going mad. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got to change, we've got to rebrand, we've got to change the name. Butcher sounds very harsh. I right. think they should be called meat stylists. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But isn't there an argument that it's good to have butchers, all butchers are robots, so then when you see a person in a blood-stained apron, you know they're just a psychopath? <laughs> <laughs> we should just get more, um, like, to encourage more people into butchery, we should get failed surgeons to apply, you know? Because if they butcher something, they're doing their job. I agree we shouldn't have robot butchers. Like, I think the only robot that should kill is Ray O'Leary when he takes the stage. <laughs> promoting their own shows at the moment, aren't they? <laughs> that sort of self-promotion makes me sick. <laughs> <laughs> Good round of newsmakers. Uh, for points, Team 1, you can have 1850 That is the price Kiwis pay for a kilo block of cheese. Ooh. Twice the amount Australians pay for the exact same block. This is why we have ram rating. Uh, maybe not the exact reason. Uh, team 2, you can have 7, which is the number of days Jacinda Ardern, our Prime Minister, had to isolate at home this week after Clark got COVID. Uh, at least Clark's finally catching something. Uh, which means our first star on the sticker chart goes to Team 1! <laughs> and you might think the stars are all for nothing. They're not for nothing. Please take a moment to gaze and ooh upon this week's opulent prize. Ooh. 
Oh. Yes, just in time for the youth crime oh. wave. It's officially licensed Peppa Pig pepper spray. <laughs> it's designed for the most hardened criminals, also makes bath time a breeze. It's the opposite of Johnson's and Johnson's No More Tears. Or is it just a can of Raid with a picture taped over it? For legal reasons, I'm going to say yes. Either way, <laughs> it belongs to the winner of this week's episode. All right, it's time for Yes Minister on Seven Days, the game where a Member of Parliament bravely sits in a chair and fields tough questions from our panel. They can answer in any way they like, except for saying yes or no. I'd like you to please welcome to the hot seat tonight National Party leader Christopher Luxon. <laughs> All right, park yourself right there, and uh, you just answer the questions, don't say yes or no, do you understand? Fully understand. All right, here we go. Christopher Luxon, I just want to start um, with an easy one, give you a chance to speak on something I think a lot of people don't know about you. Um, so, have you ever been the CEO of Air New Zealand? <laughs> I think I was. Yeah, yeah right. I, I didn't appear in any safety videos, though, which was good. <laughs> um, my question for you is, with your experience dancing on the political grave of Judith Collins, would you, would you consider Dancing with the Stars? Oh. Oh. Quietly, I'd quite like it. Would you? I admire these guys a lot. I think they've done a kick-ass job, so well done. Yeah. And who did you vote for? Uh, <laughs> Eric Murray. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say congratulations, actually, because I remember back in 2020 when you became the leader and people were like, he won't last, but here you are, Todd Muller, and it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> right, Doing it for the board, men. So. Oh, um, shoes off on a plane, yes or no? Oh, I quite like them off, yes. <gasps> no! That's all right, we'll continue. That's one to team two. Good, good stuff. Well uh, Mr. Luxon, just one CEO to another. <laughs> Aeroplanes, how do they stay up there? It freaks me, <laughs> <laughs> it freaks me out, man. <laughs> uh, Mr. Luxon, so electric cars, they go so fast, but I can't hear them. Your thoughts in a yes or no fashion. <laughs> You haven't played this for a while, have you, Don? No, I'm just getting in the rhythm of it. <laughs> have you got an electric car? I, I do have an electric car. A Tesla. I love it. <laughs> hey, a bit of nostalgia for you now, something I prepared earlier. Um, I've got a little photo I'd like to show you. There it is. Oh. That, I believe, is your first job at McDonald's. Oh. What was going through a young Christopher Luxon's head back then? Um, just how to work the drive through really. <laughs> <laughs> you were an uh, entrepreneur from an early time. I believe you've basically been creating businesses since high school. I want to know when you did a business in high school, it sounds like you were the bully extorting money. No, no. I... Thank you, that's a two. <laughs> awesome. Uh, were, you that, were you that kid who comes in and like sells the can of Cokes that have not for individual sale? Oh. <laughs> I, I sold Commando War magazines. That's oh, they're a great, that's a great comic. Reese mentioned uh, Coca-Cola, but you actually love Pepsi Max, right? I love Pepsi oh, Max. Oh, You're a Pepsi strange. Max guy? Absolutely. Yeah. Chris, yeah. you are talking to the voice of Pepsi Max. Whoa! Really? Yeah. You do yeah. voiceovers. Real taste? No, no that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> it is Pepsi Max. Max taste, zero sugar. Oh, Ooh, yeah. yeah. What, Isn't what it now? Pepsi Max? What, seriously, do you think I might have done better on Dancing with the Stars had I under, undergone conversion therapy? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Forget about winning the game, just answer the question. <laughs> you were absolutely brilliant and you were robbed. Thank oh, you. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. But there is best. one of us still in the game, so chuck us your phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was thinking, like, if you're here, then who's conducting Thomas the Tank Engine? <laughs> Do you still own seven properties? Uh, I, I do. Can yes. I have one? Oh, that's a yeah. yes. That's oh, another yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know. I'm uh, your kryptonite, Luxon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give it up for Christopher Luxon, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. You can go. And congratulations, Team 2. You get yourself a star. Well done. <laughs> now... Gather and let's be frank, electricity is a necessity in this modern age. If you don't have electricity in your house, well, you probably can't see or hear me right now. <laughs> anyway, if you don't want to pay for electricity for a little bit, then caption this photo. Here it is on your screen. Text your caption and your name to 4088. Best caption wins $500 of Frank Energy credit. There's your free electricity. You can take another look at the photo on our seven days Facebook page and we'll announce our winner toward the end of tonight's show. We're off at a break. Slip on a Hawaiian shirt, slop on some pineapple juice. We're back soon with Club Topicana on seven days. <laughs>
you're still with us, get your bikinis and your board shorts ready or your rash shirt if you're a dad embarrassed about your body. We are going to the beach. Hit the drums. That is right. It's time for Club Topicana. Teams, head on down to the sand. <laughs> All right, a huge thank you to our sponsor and pineapple provider, the good people at Dole. We call them pineapples, the French call them ananá, and the Spanish piña. Whatever you call them, call Dole first, because they make the best ones. <laughs> Inside this delectable Dole pineapple, I have some stories from the week I'd like to hear a little more about. And this is open to all teams. You can jump up whenever you have a thought. All right, here we go. First story. Uh, a union says nurses are deeply frustrated as a four-year fight for a gender pay equity agreement stalls once again. That is one reason they're angry. I'd like to see some more. Give me some examples of angry nurses, please. Angry nurses. No, I'm the rug nurse. The rug doctor is busy. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when no one respects me. OK, well, that's your pap done. <laughs> <laughs> nurse, clamps. Clamps. <laughs> 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 He's bleeding out. He's bleeding out. <laughs> no, honestly, I'm not the doctor. I'm a nurse. Men can be nurses, but don't worry, we do get paid more than the women. <laughs> OK, Mr Johnson, um, I'll need you to just slowly step into the shower. Yeah, you're right, I should piss off to my country. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Uh, we'll go back to the uh, dull pineapple. Uh, yes, OK, so an Australian weather reporter interrupted his own live cross this week. You may have seen this to save a young swimmer from drowning in surfer's paradise. Nothing wrong with him, a hero, in fact. But what I am looking for are examples of the world's worst weather reporters. I hate small talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and we've got some rain coming in in Wong and, uh, and Fong uh, and Wang. Uh, we, we're sort of by Palmerston North. <laughs> 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 is, is it this camera or this this one? This which which like which camera? Oh, anyway, there's a tsunami coming. <laughs> Just look out the window, mate. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Um, all right, and uh, over at Deal With College, they'll be dipping into the low teens. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go back to the pineapple. Uh, here we go, our next story. Oh, they're stuck together. Um, ah, yes, this is a Texas burglar was caught on home security cameras mowing the lawns of a house he was robbing before walking away with the lawnmower. What a gentleman, some might say, but I'd like to see some more examples of nice criminals. Hi, sorry, I'm not interrupting dinner. I robbed your house last week, but I just need to let you know I've since tested positive for the novel coronavirus, so you might want to get a test. <laughs> Give me all your money! Jesus. All good if not. <laughs> <laughs> Give me all your money. Oh, is this your family? Oh, you've got a baby, he's so cute. Oh, he's sleeping? Give me all your money. <laughs> What am I in for? Well, I stole a bunch of phones and texted Reese to 33. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for electing me as your MP. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm a sexually active gay man in New Zealand in 1986. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do us. Play the steel drums one more time. All right, here, I'll put the stories back in my dull pineapple. Uh, for scores, Team 1, you can have the years Dan Carter and Richie McCaw have been retired from international rugby, seven years. Uh, reason I bring that up is uh, I saw a headline this week about their post-rugby struggles. <laughs> uh, team 2... <laughs> Team two, you can have the age of a baby. Uh, it's under one. I mention this because there was a story this week suggesting babies might cry at night to prevent their parents from making any siblings. <laughs> I, I love, love that as a theory, don't you? Congratulations to the star, though, to team one. Yes. Yes. 
of that round of Club Topicana, almost as great as the fresh taste of dull pineapples. Pineapples, why eat a lump when you can eat the whole damn thing? Thank you. <laughs> Let's have a quick round of Where is the Lie? I've got four headlines for you. Three are real headlines from the week. One never happened. Our team's job is to sniff out the lie. Remember that uh, show Beyond Belief, Fact or Fiction? It's like that. Anyway, let's look at the headlines, shall we? Our first one is, UK man claims drinking his own purified urine has cured his depression and made him look younger. <laughs> Headline B, Sarah Palin to run for US Congress in Alaska against rival candidate Santa Claus. <laughs> Headline C, Ram Ram Raids only hung a store after charging at its own reflection in window. <laughs> Two otters in Tacoma Zoo, as headline D, become the first animals in the world to be legally married. Oh. See what you've done? Which one is the lie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's cute as hell. It really is. It really is. It really is. Which one is the lie? I'm going to let our teams have a think. Feel free to do that at home as well. We'll be back shortly to reveal the lie on Seven Games. <laughs> Everyone's a critic these days. No, seriously. Send your frank feedback about seven days to this email address. Stay tuned for how we use it. Could be a laugh. Hi. Kia ora and welcome back to seven days. We are in the middle of a thrilling round of Where is the Lie? Our teams have been analysing these four headlines in an attempt to figure out which one is fake. Team two, go to you first. Where did you land on this? Oh. Okay, so regarding A, I switched my drink at half time during the break, so. I think that's. Do I look up, younger? <laughs> D, I just want it to be true. Oh. I feel like it's, it's just... not our job to weird animals, like, we're not part of their kingdom. Like, it would be weird for me to tell an animal what they're vowing for. Yeah, but what if the otters want to merge assets? Then they should get an otter who will marry them. That's like, not, not an arranged marriage. Oh, my God, you're reminding me of my family now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust B, not because I don't think Santa Claus would run, but he wouldn't run Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is consumerism through and through. He's he is... very conservative, yeah. crime and punishment, nice and naughty lists. Yeah. Lock him up. <laughs> I think it's, it's A. I don't know any UK man who looks younger than his age. <laughs> Always ten years o over. Like. Also, never met a UK man who isn't depressed. Yeah, <laughs> but, that's but I've met many UK men whose teeth look like they drink piss. <laughs> <laughs> so I think C's the only one we're certain on. It could be any of the others. Yeah. Or well, I make a choice. I, I think it's A. <laughs> I think it's B. Well, I've taken into account what you've said, and I've decided to lock in D. <laughs> <laughs> There we have it. Team two thinks the lie is D. Uh, team one, your turn now. Which headline do you think is fake? Well, straight up, I do know that otters, yep. when they uh, go to sleep in water, they hold each other's hands so they don't separate. Yes, um, I've seen that. So I could see that they could get married. Those otters don't know they're married. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think A is true because um, I'm 70. Um, <laughs> um, Sarah Palin to run against um, Santa Claus. Santa Claus, I think, would be a Democrat. I think, you know, he gives away a lot of products for free every year. Uh, that's classic tax and uh, redistribute. That's progressive policy. He's basically, he's about as old as Joe Biden as well. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we, 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 we've had a bit of discussion over the break, and Ram Ram Raids just sounds too ludicrous, to be honest, compared to the others. Ram Ram Raids, that, that sounds like what a comedy writer uh, would think is funny. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, even though Onihonga is quite close to One Tree Hill, there are sheep there. But, no, yeah, but we're not even talking about sheep, are we? We're talking about a ram. Rams. Yeah. Well, where there's sheep, there's a ram. Yeah, ram, that's where beef comes from, right, Di? <laughs> beef ribs. That's where you get your beef ribs. You get um, beef from beefs. <laughs> <laughs> now, back I mean... to the matters at hand. We're, let's lock and see, OK? Yeah, we, I reckon. I we've reckon it's We've discussed it. We're working as a team. We're locking in the Ram Ram Raids as fake. OK, there we have it. Team 2 thinks the lie is D. Uh, team 1, you think the lie is C. Well, I can reveal to you all now that the lie is... D! Oh! <laughs> Married Otters. <laughs> that slippery slope hasn't quite led us there yet. Congratulations, Team 2. Gold star for you. <laughs> but you'll get there 
Otters. <laughs> you can we got one there game. You can too, Otters. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for a good old-fashioned game of answers. I'm going to present our teams with some answers. They are from the week's news. They need to provide the question to match, like normal question and answer, but backwards. You watch, you'll figure it out. Team two, you can begin with this answer. 865 inmates. Oh, who could I take down with just one bar of soap? <laughs> <laughs> What, uh, what number do you call to meet sexy inmates in your area? <laughs> what do Australians see when they do a DNA test? <laughs> <laughs> what was killed during the making of Shawshank Redemption? <laughs> Who can beat Wellington on a good day? <laughs> <laughs> Who does not enjoy being served the free-range chicken? <laughs> The real question is who had their jail time reduced thanks to reading books? It's a new initiative from Bolivia which encourages literacy by letting the most well-read prisoners leave prison days or even weeks early. Although I think I speak for everyone here when I say I'd rather rot in prison than be a f***ing nerd. <laughs> what about the poor dude who read the Lord of the Rings trilogy and he actually stayed an extra two months? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of prisoners are a lot of prisoners are finding the reading quite hard, so they're asking for the sentences to be reduced. <laughs> Very good. You don't want to read in the library because you know if you get shoved there, you can't scream. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Team two, give me a question for this answer. Weight loss, fatigue, and abdominal pain. What do I feel when I have to remember the name of a friend's partner? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, what did uh, Amber Heard experience while crouched over Johnny Depp's pillow? <laughs> Is it uh, one long black wakes you up, two long blacks does what? <laughs> Is it what did I win on Dancing with the Stars? Oh. Uh, the real question there is what might happen to you when you let a dog lick your face? An Australian doctor shocked dog owners by revealing dog saliva isn't actually made from hand sanitizer, and if you get it on your face, you can get sick. Don't kiss your dog, was his message. If we're not supposed to have our dog's tongue in our mouth, why is it called a French bulldog? All good question. <laughs> so what happens? What happens if you and your dog uh, eating a delicious plate of Italian food. Yep. And you happen to get a spaghetti strap. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have a little kiss. Is that... You're going to get sick, know. are you? Well, this is the thing. Everyone, like I thought, as a dog owner, that their saliva contained all these antibiotics and stuff, and that was actually not bad for you, but this is obviously not the case. But if we're not supposed to kiss our dogs, I mean, how am I supposed to get better at it? Oh, <laughs> 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 no. We have a problem because my boyfriend Sam, his family have a beautiful uh, little dog called Iris and literally oh. every time we kiss, she runs and joins in, which is like, it feels kind of nice, but then maybe to me is, maybe she's homophobic. Maybe she's like, I'll fix you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just need to try, just try. Yeah. Yeah. Could be jealousy, maybe she doesn't like you kissing yeah. him. She's yes. trying to cut your lunch. I think so. Or she just saw gay marriage be legalised and was like, this is the logical next step. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's another answer. This is for both teams. A single suitcase. Oh, what would have really changed Chappelle Corby's holiday? <laughs> <laughs> what is a suitcase after a divorce? Oh. <laughs> what goes around the carousel about eight times before the rest of the bags come out? <laughs> <laughs> what do Cirque du Soleil book as an Airbnb? <laughs> The question there is, what did an American couple take with them when they moved their whole life onto a cruise ship? The Seattle's 50-somethings calculated that nightly stays on an all-inclusive cruise ship worked out cheaper than paying their mortgage, so they retired early. And this couple is becoming quite well known, actually, on the trip the regular cruise takes. They say there's this bearded guy on an honour that waves at them frantically every time they go past. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, any, any of you done stand-up on a cruise, like yep. a comedy cruise? You've done it. Yeah, many times. Good? Yeah, it's three days and, boy, is that enough. <laughs> <laughs> See, I could do it if it was one of those Mediterranean sort of ones, you know, where it's all... <laughs> All sort of, you know. Oh yeah, uh, we know what you mean. <laughs> but you know where it's like, where it's not like, hey, you're going for five days to Sydney and back. It's like, you know, you're going over here and you're having an olive, then you're going over there and you're having like it's something a little domaze, you know. <laughs> I could do that. Where it's you know, a different port, a different day, I'd feel like I was a sort of some sort of Vietnam vet, and I'd dress up and everything. It'd be cool. <laughs> Me 
and my wife are trying to um, buy at the moment, and we've run the math, and I think that we can afford to live on the Waiheke Ferry for about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to go political points for answers this time. Team Wayne, you can have the amount the government spent on two large prop zeros. So they spent $10,000 for their Road to Zero campaign. Oh, yeah. Could have cut them out of polystyrene for way less than that. I would have done it for 9000 Anyway, uh, <laughs> Team 2, you can have the amount of money the National Party received in donations last year. Over $1 million. Five times more than Labour. And that is enough. Congratulations and a beautiful shining star for Team 2! <laughs> It is time for a quick break, one of many in fact. Get ready to judge some art judgingly though, because when we return, we'll be playing My Audience Can Draw That on 7 days. <laughs> A game we normally play with adorable children. Instead, we're going to play with less adorable audience members. We've selected two of them to artistically recreate a story from the week. And uh, Team One, you are up first. Tell us what our audience member has drawn. My name is Jared. I went to Lincoln Primary School, and this is my picture. <laughs> oh, it's good. Well, uh, well, Jared from Lincoln Park. This is. <laughs> <laughs> this is about space, the first frontier. <laughs> it, it looks like the signal you put up of Batman needs to use the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. It looks like Orion needs to put his belt back on. <laughs> is, there a, is there a cow with a sombrero? <laughs> <laughs> I think um, Rain was on to something here about the bat signal. Um, <laughs> this is, um, I don't know if you, uh, I've done a lot of astronomy courses. This is Hubble House, <laughs> where they have the Hubble, you know, the... Telescope? Yeah, I was going to say binoculars. <laughs> it's just one, yeah. too, by the way. It's not a telescope, it's the... Not a, not yeah, but I like to see deeper into space, so I look through it with binoculars. <laughs> <laughs> No, so are we projecting something into space or are oh. we sending... Because we were sending information, like, to aliens to say, we're here, we're and here, like come and visit. Picture, visual aids and stuff. Like, sending them pictures. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. would be visual aids. Yeah. I thought visual aids was a horrendous eye disease. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you got? <laughs> Team one, die. Um, New Zealand is sending nude photographs of farmers into space <laughs> to try and allure aliens. Uh, I'm not sure you're right. Let's check with Jared. Jared, can you explain your drawing, please? Um, so, yeah, we're sending nudes to space so that the aliens can see what we look like and hopefully come to... Earth. So down here we've got our scientific nude technician who has generated the nudes, which are then going to be blasted into space by our light beams um, for the aliens to see so that they can see what these two nude humans look like. Um, hoping to invite them to our planet here in the solar system. Nice. Um, but then it's gone wrong and our aliens have come to steal our cows. And this is my picture. Great work, Jared. Yes, uh, NASA scientists are planning on sending naked pictures of human beings into outer space in the hopes of making contact with extraterrestrial beings. Uh, the last time nude images were sent to space was 1973 and there was no response back then, though NASA reckons that may have been because of all the pubes. <laughs> with the transmission, you know, getting in the way of that. It's going to be so brutal if we send them up there and it just comes back seen. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm concerned about? What if one of the aliens that receives this is, is an over 18? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. I, I imagine they're not sexual images, though. They'll just be a projection of what the biological species that we are. So <laughs> just, you have a look. That's, that's what they look like, on what you're seeing there on the wall. I waited for that to buffer in 1990. <laughs> yeah, it does look like that, doesn't it? It looks from that vintage. Do you think sending nudes into space was planned or an accident? It's probably unsolicited. You think? <laughs> Jeremy, it's never an accident. No, but what I mean is someone at NASA was on their computer looking at porn oh. and they got caught and said, what the hell are you doing? You're like, oh, I'm working on a new way of communicating with aliens. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> just anything on the computer is like, oh no, that's going to space. Yeah, that's send it up. Yeah, this barbecue, one dollar reserve. Boom. Going to space. Tractors, <laughs> up they go. It's hard because like now the aliens see these these diagrams of us, like they're just gonna come to Earth and body shame us. Like yeah. you look nothing like the picture. <laughs> <laughs> we're catfishing aliens. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a great story. I suspect the first message we're gonna get from aliens will be new satellite, who dis? <laughs> uh, give it up for Jared. Thank you, Jared. <laughs> All right, team two, would you like to meet our second audience member? Absolutely. Please. Yeah. All right, all yours. Hi, my name is Itai. I went to McKeith Aleph High School, and this is my picture. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's good. Damn. This is, an, this is amazing. Is yeah. Is this a Dyson fan in the bottom right? <laughs> <laughs> And they're, they're, they're anti Tinder, it looks like. Very steep hill. Oh, the dri this driver is very unhappy. Yes, yes. And very small compared to the size of the car. So we've got a picture of that being what? Like a, a Range Rover, a Jeep, a big, a big an SUV. Old car. Also, no yeah. passengers, so he clearly gives zero Fs about the environment. <laughs> oh, that's what the, the fingers are. It's giving the bird. Oh, oh yes. the bird, yeah. Oh. Yes. Oh. Um, yeah, I, I know what this is. <laughs> Uh, some climate change activists had a really good idea to get everyone on board with the idea of climate change, and they went around Auckland deflating the tires of SUVs. Oh. oh. Jeremy? You're going to go with that? Yeah. The tie? Can you explain your picture, please? Uh, sure can, Jeremy. So this is uh, <laughs> an angry guy in a SUV, and this is the tires, and this is air coming out. He's like mad, he's like, oh, bloody hippies. And uh, there's like a cool hippie uh, giving him the bird, like, don't be driving those SUVs around. And that's my picture. Right. Yeah. Well done, Reese. Uh, no. Yes. A uh, climate action group known as the Tire Extinguishers have been targeting utes and SUVs in Auckland. The group strike by letting the air out of parked vehicles and leaving a scary note on the windscreen. And I'd, like, I'd like, actually like to thank them because now you've deflated my tires, I can finally fit my Hummer into the garage. Which is great. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't love a Hummer in the garage? <laughs> they, they deflated the tires of a first car mm. so that a second car had to come and fix the first <laughs> car so that the first car could drive again. This is really well thought. <laughs> Wait, so are you are you guys against the tire slashes? Because you are not going to like the surprise I left for you in the car park. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up for Itai, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Itai. Great drawing from both Itai and Jared. We thank you. Uh, team one for points. You can have the number of New Zealand towns we are visiting on our seven days live tour next month. There are 13 uh, towns we are visiting. You Google seven days live if you're into it. Don't if you're not. Uh, team two, the time it took New Zealand speed golfer Jamie Reid to complete 18 holes of golf on Saturday. Golfers, you'll be astounded by this. 31 minutes. Normally takes three or four hours. And he shot a world speed golf record of 69, which means twinkle, twinkle, little team two, a star for you. Yeah. All right, focus, pay attention in this ad break because we are going to announce the winning caption for this week's Let's Be Frank competition. You do that, we'll be right back with a sure to be incredible round of Beat the Ding on Seven Days. For Beat the Ding, where I ask panellists to give me a list very quickly. Is this related to the news? Only very loosely, but it's fun to watch them struggle to do it, so let's do it. Each successful attempt does earn them a star, so the dinging will commence momentarily. Here we go. This week, New Zealand achieved the unwanted milestone of passing 1 million COVID-19 cases. Angela, you have 10 seconds to tell me eight famous diseases. Go. Corona? Uh, oh my god, diseases. Um, um, disease. Um, the skin disease, um, lung disease, heart disease. Um, oh my god. Didn't, didn't quite make it give her a round of applause. Oh, yeah, no. A drug king pleaded guilty in the Christchurch High Court this week after a storage unit belonging to him was found to contain 14,000 ecstasy pills. Also known as, well, I'll let you tell me, Ray. Oh. You have nine seconds to give me five street names for the drug ecstasy. Oh, Go. Um, Molly, um, Fat Doggle, um, uh, Bring the Boys, um, Mama's Milk, um, <laughs> um, Drink Up Laddies, uh, and, and Skin Tag. <laughs> Drink up, 
Bob Lettys. Did he say fat dongle or something? Skin tags? Mother's yeah. milk? Skin, skin tags skin tag. would be a disease. Yeah. Yeah. Angela skin should tag. get a point for that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the problem is I haven't heard any of these, but I could be wrong because well, I don't do a lot of dealing in E. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm from Wanganui and that's very popular. We all go home and drop a skin tag. <laughs> I was entertaining enough. I'll pay it. I'll pay it. I'll give you a star. Good on you, Ray. I know. I know. It's like I'm making the rules up. An Australian <laughs> farmer made headlines this week after teaching his dog Lexi and Jack Russell how to drive his ute. Reese, you have 15 seconds to name four car brands, but you have to make them dog puns. What? <laughs> Go. Uh, a Toyota High Rough. <laughs> um, uh, a Ford Comma Dog, um, a uh, uh, Toyota Vichon Frise. Um, oh, oh, come on, there's got to be one more. Um, a, uh, a nurse. Don't you dare think that I will kill your family! Um, uh, uh, what? Uh, a nurse and pup star. Oh. oh, he did it. He did well. What was that last one? A nurse and pup star. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll pay it. Well done, Reese. <laughs> uh, although under threat to my family, so <laughs> we move on. Rwandan Scottish actor Shuti Gatwa was cast as the latest incarnation of Doctor Who, making him the first black actor to lead the iconic sci-fi series. Juzzy, you have ten seconds to name six famous doctors. Go. Doctor Who, Doctor Strangelove, Doctor Dre, Doctor Doctor uh, Mitchell, my doctor, uh, Doctor 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 Oh, Doctor Chris oh, Water! Phil. Oh. Well, Chris Water would have been one, but unfortunately the thing got in the way. I'm sorry, Juzzy, I can't pay that. This week's celebrity chef, we all know the story, Nadia Lim finally received a long overdue apology from the rich lister Simon Henry, who referred to her as uh, in an interview as Eurasian fluff. Seems like a lovely man, doesn't he? Anyway, Eli Matthewson, you have ten seconds to name four people you owe an apology to. Go! Um, Angela, I feel like I could have warmed you up for your round better so that you could have nailed um, uh, your, your thing. I need to apologise to um, the gay community for not representing you for longer on Dancing with the Stars. I need to apologise to Jesus. I'm... I'm <laughs> You could have got there, you were just explaining your apology <laughs> yeah, too sorry, much. We could yeah. have taken that. You, you hit the big three, though. <laughs> Angela, the gay community, Jesus. <laughs> 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 All right, this week Auckland proposed a new climate friendly gondola to cross the Waitamata Harbour. Di, you have 10 seconds to convincingly sing one song in Italian in the style of a Venetian gondolier. Stand up. Go. Italiano, Bassamalano, you put the drizzle on the thingy And you eat a spaghetti rooney up your face, solo down your pants <laughs> And you won't forget I did say convincingly, and I was convinced. Yeah. <laughs> you can have a star. Well done, Di. Uh, yeah, holy Toledo, we are out of time. That's the end of that. Let's look upon our sticker chart one more time to find out who gets the Peppa Pig spray. Congratulations. Team 2, it is you. Well done. Here's your spray. Keep out of the reach of children and adults, actually. It's very dangerous. That was seven days tonight. Please join me in thanking our panellists this week. Di, Justine, Ray, Eli, Angela and Reese. We'll see you in seven days on seven days. Paul Mario, good night. Thanks, New Zealand on air. And if you want to keep this New Zealander on air, vote Reese to 3333. <laughs> Is it a text or an email? It's a text! <laughs> <laughs>